Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, this is uh, Nelly Deutsch. It's not Eba. Eba's going to be here in a minute. I'm just going to introduce her, and then I'll go into uh, my other room where I'll be coming in as me. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and uh, how you are this Saturday, if it's Saturday, if it's already Sunday, you can tell us that in the chat box. And anything else you'd like to add where you are exactly, what you're doing. <laughs> All right, so feel free to use the chat box as you go. If you notice um, in the chat box, I've added the code. Okay, I'll keep adding it later on too, so that you can get your badge from the Connected Educator and uh, the United States Department of Education uh, because this is uh, Education Week or actually Education Month. All right, so let's get started with our presenter. Eba is going to present on Collaborative Arenas for Learning, a Culture of Sharing. And this is something that I've been trying to do for a number of years, and I'm so happy that we're going to have a chance to hear Dr. Eba. The focus of the presentation will be on social interaction through learning from online sources, such as Moodle Wiki's blogs and other social media, and you can read more about that. Uh, Eba Oceanillis Nilsson, I hope I pronounced that correctly, has a PhD. She's project manager at the Center for Educational Development. If you think her name is unusual, it's not. It's just uh, that she's from Sweden. Um, and at the evaluation office at the Lund University in Sweden. December 2012, she was appointed to take the lead for the Lund University to go towards open education. And this is so amazing, you have no idea because not every university is open to MOOCs and OERs, Open Education Resources, and so on. And to investigate strategic missions on e-learning for Lund University. And more. I've shared uh, the PowerPoint presentation where you can get all this information about Dr. Ebba. Uh, what I found interesting is that she has uh, a graduate degree, and I believe undergraduate, in occupational therapy uh, and medicine. And I think that's uh, very special, especially since the uh, theme of the Moodle MOOC is not just Moodle, but it's transpersonal development. And you can see her BSc is also in occupational therapy. And she also has a diploma in nursing education. So the diversity is very, very welcome. And you can see more about her. There's a lot, in fact, because she has done quite a bit. You can get the live links, as I said. All this is available at uh, the Moodle MOOC and in the chat box at the very top. Okay, so uh, we're going to get started. This is, uh, as I said, also available. Okay, this is a PowerPoint presentation that Eva is going to use. So I'm going to pass on the mic to Eva, and then I'm going to go off as Nelly. So welcome, Eva. I see the top of your head for some reason. And um, some pottery, ceramics. Um, I think you need to maybe move the uh, webcam so that we can see. Okay, I stopped the recording because um, we're not getting anything. Okay, so I just, of course. Do you want to move the PowerPoint <laughs> or would you like me to do that? Um, I can do it myself, I think. Excellent. All right. So thank you. If it, hopefully we can have the... I'm going to do. Let the show begin. 
Can I start now? Yes, you may start whenever you're ready. Great. Uh, hello and good evening and good morning, everyone who are attending the class. For me, it is uh, nearly late afternoon noon now. Uh, I'm happy to be here today and to share some thoughts about uh, collaborative arenas for learning and cultural sharing. Uh, I am Ebosa Nilsson uh, from Lund University in Sweden. I'm a PhD and I, um, I do research on uh, open learning uh, and e-learning and mainly on quality issues. So this is me. I used to work um, different uh, with a variety of uh, organizations around in the world, mainly in Europe, uh, such as um, FQL. I'm a board member there. That is an organization for quality and e-learning. I'm a reviewer in the Unique, which is the quality label for open learning. And I'm also a reviewer for eDebate, which I've also helped uh, found it together with some colleagues around the world. I'm a board member in Eden. I'm the vice president in uh, uh, a Swedish organization on distance uh, education and learning. And recently I worked on a project on um, MOOCs on, and quality for FQL. And I also do some work, used to do some work for UNESCO and for, for, for open learning. I did my PhD in uh, Uni University in Finland, so I uh, used to live as I learn. Uh, to do distance education. So this is uh, just very brief uh, about my uh, dissertation, so you know my background. I did it on benchmarking e-learning in higher education. And what I really stressed was that uh, we more and more have to trade out the E. Of course, nowadays, uh, this is not relevant, uh, so relevant any longer as we talk about uh, open educational arenas uh, in to a huge extent. Uh, so we'll focus today on uh, collaborative arenas for learning and the cultural sharing. And I think this is really an important issue because uh, as we are living in a global society nowadays with a, a huge uh, variety of technologies, we really um, have to collaborate much more as we are doing and we also need to share what we are doing because that is a, the only way we can take uh, part of what is happening globally and to be sustainable and to uh, work on quality issues. So we'll try to uh, focus on some trends, possibilities and uh, barriers and what's in it for me. Why am I, am I arguing, ar arguing about that? Because nowadays it's not longer our students and our support and our education and our content. And this is exactly what Christian and Murray um, already in 2011 stated. Of course, um, the globe is uh, like this. There are 100 million of people out there, both learners, also academic and professionals, which we have to collaborate with. And the only thing, the only um, way we can do that is to share our knowledge, experiences, competences, and what we are doing. And we have to share our learning arenas much more than we are doing right now. Of course, we have the possibilities to take the use of any teacher around the globe and of any content to OERs. And using OERs is really about sharing context and content. So what does it all mean? The thing is uh, what uh, the European Commission uh, here in Europe has expressed that higher education is the key to well-qualified workforce, to build a stronger and more productive economy. 
And everything starts with access. And to get access, you need to share resources, content, ideas, research. And if students still are forced to operate in ancient educational models, how can we then expect them to participate successfully in the modern market society? Because the modern market society is built on a sharing culture. Already in 2011, uh, the Paris Declaration was, uh, was out and launched. And then they stated very, very strong and very heavily that all member states should and ought to share their resources much more than they are doing nowadays. And also that organizations need to build their organizations in that way that um, they can share uh, educational resources, that they can share open access, that and that they can use open access materials freely available for everyone at any time, at any time they want. Ongoing today. Will class start now? So open education and the sharing of culture very much starts with the use of creative commons. Uh, hello and good evening and good morning everyone who are attending the class. For me it is uh, nearly late afternoon noon now. Uh, I'm happy to be here today and to share some thoughts about uh, collaborative arenas for learning, a culture of sharing. Uh, I am Ebos Nilsson uh, from Lund University in Sweden. I'm a PhD and I, um, I do research on uh, open learning uh, and e-learning and mainly on quality issues. Um, uh, so this is me. I used to work um, with different, uh, with a variety of uh, organizations around in the world, mainly in Europe, uh, such as um, FQL, I'm a board member there. That is an organization for quality and e-learning. I'm a reviewer in the Unique, which is a quality label for open learning. And I'm also a reviewer for eProbate, which has also was uh, founded together with some colleagues around the world. I'm a board member in Eden. I'm the vice president in the uh, Swedish organization on distance uh, education and learning. And recently, I worked on a project on um, MOOCs on qu and quality for FQL. And I also do some work, used to do some work for UNESCO and for Co Commonwealth of Learning. I did my PhD in uh, Yule University in Finland, so I uh, used to live as I learn uh, to, to do distance education. So this is just very brief about my dissertation, so you know my background. I did it on benchmarking, e-learning in higher education. And what I really stressed was that uh, we more and more have to fade out the E. Because nowadays uh, this is not relevant, uh, so relevant any longer as we talk about uh, open educational arenas uh, in, to a huge extent. Uh, so we'll focus today on uh, collaborative arenas for learning and the cultural sharing. And I think this is really an important issue because uh, as we are living in a global society nowadays with a uh, huge uh, variety of technologies, we <coughs> really uh, have to collaborate much more as we are doing and we also need to share what we are doing because that is uh, the only way we can take uh, part of what is happening globally and to be sustainable and to uh, work on quality issues. So we'll try to focus on some trends, possibilities and uh, barriers and what's in it for me. 
Why am I, am I arguing, arguing about that? Because nowadays it's not longer our students and our support and our education and our content. And this is exactly what President Murray uh, already in 2011 stated. Because um, the globe is uh, like this. There are 100 millions of people out there, both learners, but also academic professionals, which we have to collaborate with. And the only thing, the only um, way we can do that is to share our knowledge, experiences, competences, and what we are doing. And we have to share our learning arenas much more than we are doing right now. Because we have the possibilities to take the use of any teacher around the globe and of any content to OERs. And using OERs is really about sharing context and content. So what does it all mean? The thing is uh, what uh, the European Commission uh, here in Europe has expressed that higher education is the key to a well-qualified workforce to build a stronger and more productive economy. And everything starts with access. And to get access, we need to share resources, content, ideas, research. And if students still are forced to operate in ancient educational models, how can we then expect them to participate successfully in the modern market society? Because the modern market society is built on a sharing culture. Already in 2011, uh, the Paris Declaration was uh, was out and launched, and then they stated very, very strong, very heavily that all member states should and ought to share their resources much more than they are doing nowadays, and also that organisations need to build their organisations in that way that um, they can share. Uh, educational resources, that they can share open access, that, and that they can use open access materials freely available for everyone at any time, at any kind of device. So open education and the sharing of culture very much start with the use of Creative Commons. To license the production and the work people are doing around the globe, we create a commons licenses because then everyone can use it, reuse, reuse it, adapt it, and even sell it, sell it if they would like to do it. But the main thing is that it is the producer, the owner of the material, who takes the responsibility which kind of license uh, his or her material sh should be, be used on. You can use the very, very much a free uh, license, for example, just yes, that you get um, uh, recognized for it, and that is the buy, CC buy. And you can use the very mo most, uh, in Creative Commons, uh, most uh, locked uh, licenses that you're not allowed to change it, you're not allowed to adapt it, you're not allowed to sell it, you're just allowed to use it as it is. For example, my slides here, I used to have buy and uh, an essay, share alike. So you share can use my slides in the same way as I use them. The main thing with Creative Commons, I'm sure that many of you know about it already, but uh, it is worth to stress that um, the main thing with criticans is that it is the author, the owner of the material, who decide himself or herself what other people can do with it. And as I said, um, collaborative readers for learning and the culture of sharing all starts with access. And if you get access to materials, you need to 
use Creative Commons licenses. It's much easier for all of us if it is like that. Because if you have Creative if you just have a copyright license, then you actually have to ask the author or the producer if you can use it. And it's not very easy to always find the, the author. You have to write emails, you have to find the him or her at Facebook, etc. And it will take time. And it's not really feasible. So open education and free education for all. Every starts with, everything starts with free access. You can't hardly have a, any kind of presentation nowadays without mentioning the MOOCs. So the herd is coming. And that is also about collaborative arenas. Well, now prestige universities have started to launch uh, MOOCs free, of, free for everyone with no requirements for entrance, with no requirements just uh, as to have a device or an internet. That is more or less the two only demands you can have. Uh, otherwise, everything is free with MOOCs. But I will say, unfortunately, some of the MOOCs don't always have Creative Commons licenses. And um, I think those who produce MOOCs and uh, deliver MOOCs have to look, o look over what kind of licenses they, they have in them. Uh, I will not uh, spend that very much time on the MOOCs, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> because I think that is uh, nearly a, a whole conference as such. But I would like to mention that uh, we had the European project uh, from FQL, which went uh, worldwide uh, half a year ago. We asked um, some of the most um, uh, research-based person, uh, like uh, Stephen Downs, like um, Wayne McIntosh, uh, like uh, uh, one of those founders of MOOCs. Uh, we, we asked them to write blog posts for us. And the only thing was that they had to write 1,500 words on their view on quality, quality on MOOCs. And they had different kind of perspectives. Uh, as I said, we had uh, Wayne McIntosh, we had uh, Stephen Downs, we had Gordon Connell, we have uh, uh, Dave Cromier, we had... Um, people from Creative Commons, uh, we have people from UNESCO. We also had a student. Actually, he was from Lund University. <laughs> um, but uh, when we looked at those uh, blog posts, there were 12 of them. So we posted one, one uh, each week. And there was a lot of comments uh, uh, from the audience. But when we extracted what was in the, in the blog post, they came up um, for, uh, seven uh, themes. Uh, which you have to, to really relate to and to, to consider when you're talking about quality. What does quality mean when you have a massive blog group? There are people from all over the world, from different time zones, from different, different ethnic and culture uh, arenas. Um, there are different um, uh, ages, different sex, etc. So it is really a diverse target group. And what does that mean we, when we're talking about quality, when we're talking about a culture of sharing? The groups are really mixed, as I said. Ages, sex, um, uh, diversity and uh, culture and uh, habits, uh, etc. And also, what does quality mean when learning is across across contexts, and also also how can we support self organization in learning? Because when you're working in um, collaborative arenas like the social media and with MOOCs, um, you really have to organize your learning. And how can we prepare participants to do that? I mean, some of us are rather good in that, uh, especially if we are learn to do it or if we do it today on daily basis on in our life or, wo or work. But um, 
it's not always easy for students to, to self-organize uh, him or herself, uh, especially when they are when using internet, where there are such a variety of material out there. And uh, how shall you filter? How shall you create? And how shall you create our, your your material? So the, that's one reason why one of the, the blog posts really stressed the, the importance of, on how to declare what's in it, and how you can navigate. What are the what do you um, uh, what are the outcomes of the course? What are the outcomes of the learning? So they really can take responsibility for their own learning processes, and also to be willing to share. Um, the peer-to-peer -peer pedagogy is important. And what does that mean on quality aspects? And that came also up um, uh, maybe a new concept, which I myself like very much. Because talking about um, collaborative arenas for learning and the cultural sharing, it is not that universities or departments offer any longer. It's much more about choice-based learning. It is the learner who chooses what they, what they would like to learn and from where and from what resources. So choice-based learning, I think it's a really good word uh, and you have to reflect what that means. So what do you mean by um, talking about open learning, Sometimes you can discuss how open is open. For example, as I mentioned earlier, many of the open so-called courses like MOOCs have uh, material which you have to buy, have material which is uh, with copyright. So how open is open? And if it, you have closed materials, materials in your op, so-called open courses, it is not always uh, supported for, for cultural sharing. Uh, maybe this is a bit simple for you to see, I don't really know, but I will just uh, say briefly, um, European Commission and uh, the Research Institute for you, European, the European Commission have um, pointed out um, several competences which is important for uh, a culture of sharing. And uh, most of those uh, competences are on in interdisciplinary um, level like uh, problem solving, self-learning abilities, soft skills, self-competency, um, ability to communicate, uh, uh, media, literacy. And I think in education and in the school systems, we do not not always appreciate those uh, key competence enough, competences enough. Uh, we are quite often very keen to just uh, focus on the content, not on the processes, and not on those key competences, how you can work with the content. Um, as I am from Europe, I maybe have a rather European perspective. And uh, last month, uh, in the end of September, the European Commission launched uh, the Opening Up Education to boost innovation and digital skills in schools and universities. And this is a really, really good initiative, which helps institutions and learners and um, citizens uh, more work on the collaborative arena and to try to implement uh, a different kind of mindset where a cultural sharing is important. And I will just show you, um, this is a new portal uh, which also was launched in the end of September. And uh, this is uh, Open Education Europa. And uh, what, is, what it is, is that uh, it is a portal for finding resources, um, a portal for sharing resources, uh, a portal for uh, in-depth um, uh, 
papers, uh, literature, projects, news, articles, whatever you like. So this is really the portal you can go to if you would like to collaborate with people like like my minded as yourself. And you can stay up with what with with what uh, is happening and get the research insights and facts and the, you can also find the research hub uh, where all the research in openness in open education is and the, those of you who are maybe not in, in Europe um, you're also welcome to put in your material and your ideas uh, or pro projects projects here so please have a look at this side uh, in the future it is bright news, maybe it is not that much yet, but uh, I think it will be a huge resource for all of us. <clears throat> so why is Europe um, doing this? And why is the Commission uh, uh, keen to, to introduce this opening up at Europe? Um, there are eight recommendations for educational institutions to opening up. And open up doesn't mean just open the resources and MOOCs like this. It's also about opening a very, very wide meaning. Like, um, how do we, our institutions organized? Uh, you need maybe to rethink your ordinary, rather black box system, which we have had for several hundreds of years by now. The infrastructure is not built for for opening up education. We all know, for example, that we have at universities, we have departments, and they are rather close to each by each, and uh, they don't cooperate that much, and the uh, teachers have to have a, a special amount of hours for the teaching, and that doesn't allow um, open, uh, open a flipped classroom, for example. Um, because that takes, of course, more time in the beginning to um, or reorganize your, your educational system. Um, another uh, recommendation is to uh, exploit the potential of massive open online courses, as I already have been mentioned uh, uh, somewhat uh, about MOOCs, to really consider if the institutions can be part of the movement of MOOCs. And also to equip teachers with high digital competences and also learners, of course and to my, make high quality open educational resources and to work with open educational practices. Because it is first when it comes to practice, uh, when we had, and then we can become so caring. It's not just the resources as, as such, it is the way how we use it. And uh, working in, with this personal learning environment um, uh, facilities, it's very easy to share your resources as well. Uh, sorry, I so what do we mean by opening up education? The most important is that the digital technologies allow all individuals to learn anywhere, anytime, to any device with the support of anyone. And that's the reason why it is so important to collaborate, because it's, as I said from the, one of the first slides, it's not just my courses, my students, my content. We need to collaborate in the community of practices and in networks. And there are some good um, um, resources. Uh, if I would like to so, uh, learn more about the MOOCs, for example, I will really recommend this um, uh, this um, report from the Department of Business Innovations and Skills about the maturity of the MOOCs, and also the UNESCO uh, papers on, on guidelines on open education resources and cultures. Um, one of my colleagues uh, from Germany, uh, he's also the president in FQL, he has just come out with this uh, book on open learning cultures. And this is a guide to quality uh, education and uh, assessment for the future learning with open learning arenas. Uh, 
so why is this so important to talk about uh, a culture of sharing and collaboration between us? Because learning take pay place take place in ubiquitous different places. Learning is everywhere nowadays. Um, this is uh, an image from my own research um, about quality. Um, what I would like to show this is that it is important to, when you're thinking about openness and the collaborative arenas, you not just have to think about the resources as, as such, but also about how is the management organized? How is the services organized? Do you just have service for from 9 to 5? for example, for IT services or library service, or is it open really uh, night and day long? Uh, I talked also about uh, transparency for the learners. To take on, it's important for, uh, to have transparency and to have um, uh, accessibility and flexibility for the learners so they can, can take control of their own learning processes. And also so they can participate in a, in a goal-directed way for themselves to reach the goals. So learning design is very, very crucial. And especially when we talk about collaborative learning and uh, cultural sharing. Now when we have all those um, different uh, variety of social media, how can we use that? Uh, I can just tell you, for example, um, uh, yesterday we had a conference at this, this uh, Swedish organization for, for distance education. And we had a Baltic um, uh, award and the winner for that prize this year um, uh, was uh, to Riga University in uh, Latvia and they had a very nice project. Uh, nowadays when we have uh, at least uh, three screens of us, we have the mobile, we have the, uh, the computer, we have the tablet. Uh, everything what they are doing, they uh, uh, launch in all those three devices and it is a the product was about that they do it uh, automatically for example when students were taking courses everything was um, launched SMS in the mobile and on the screens with uh, different kind of, of uh, technology types because nowadays really everyone are used to, to handle at least three three different kind of screens. And they are checking Facebook, they are checking SMS, people are, they are surfing on internet, etc., etc. And that is also very much about uh, openness. If you are interested to, to read more, or, or hear, more, hear more about this project, it is called the Tree, Tree Big Project from Latvia, Riga University. I didn't put it in my slide because it is uh, right, bright new as it was yesterday they got uh, the prize. It's also another thing about openness. Uh, quite a long time we have had this uh, LMS which is used to be rather closed and locked. Uh, it is more um, nowadays to go for personal learning environment where the students and learners can uh, make their own uh, learning arena and they use the different uh, places where they used to go, the courses, their private places, etc. And to get an overview over it. And um, working in, with this personal learning environment um, uh, facilities, it's very easy to share your resources as well. It is just one or more, one and or two click away. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I don't see any um, issues. It seems that, so, so uh, sk some skills to learn uh, and to cultivate for, for sharing, for collaborative uh, learning, is to filter, uh, curate, and to collaborate. Uh, open, open education resources, uh, say, wiki educator, 
uh, Wayne McIntosh. I know I am. Um, um, perhaps, perhaps some resources um, for help, filter uh, information. I mean, nowadays there are so many much uh, uh, information available, and uh, it's not any difficulties to find anything. Uh, the difficulty is to filter it because it is rather easy to get overwhelmed. And some examples for filtering information is um, a resource called uh, NetWipes or Freedly. Um, to curate, uh, we have the Scupid. I'm sure you, many of you are familiar with it. Uh, another one is um, Pinterest or EduClipper. Uh, to get collaborate, uh, there is uh, the Padlet or concept board. And then, of course, some free cloud to tools like uh, Google Drive, Facebook, uh, Twitter, blog, etc. I see there's a question here by uh, Kajo. Is there a space in open education for structured learning where the students, I presume, are guided? Um, I think I what I can say, um, learning culture and impact. Of course, it has an impact on the learning, which kind of um, learning arenas you are used to. Um, the slide to the image to, to the left. Sorry, the, the text is in the Swedish. <laughs> uh, but of course, it makes a difference if you have this slide. This is a huge aulas, or if you have a go more for social learning or personalized learning. Other than some barriers for collaborative learning and to have a to develop a culture of sharing. I would like to argue that of course some barriers can be possible but I think the most uh, Visible barriers are maybe the mindset and the attitudes and the norms. Just like uh, if you are saying if the glass is half uh, full or half empty, it depends on which way you are seeing it. So attitudes, norms, culture is the most important. Uh, there is an ongoing uh, international uh, project which is called Power Up. And they have put um, some uh, like five uh, important uh, issues for opening up education. And that is, of course, legal issues like licenses we were talking about, about creative commons, etc., the business models, technology, the academic, and policy. And here again, I will argue for that all five uh, dimensions are important when you're going for opening up education and to work with collaborative arenas and to work with a, co uh, a culture of sharing. Because all aspects are, and all dimensions are important. Uh, some... Um, people or some institutions say, yes, we are working with uh, open education because we are using open access for our, we have e-books. That is fine. There are so many other dimensions as well. And even on MOOCs, um, many institutions go for MOOCs nowadays and say, yes, we are open, we have MOOCs. Uh, but if you still have um, locked arenas like um, LMS, for example, uh, for your ordinary courses, then the institutions are not that open. So what is from why is it important with openness and collaboration and open learning cultures? Because then I myself as a learner can take control. Um, and I can reach my goals, and I can be part in a learning society. In Europe, with a face-to-face -face, uh, student, or maybe fully online as well. But uh, many of us are finding the face-to-face -face student less and less able, not only to focus in class. But and very many uh, argue for that uh, quality is in the you know, eye of the holder, and um, 
I think we have to think about that uh, quite often, uh, more often than we do. Quite often, quality is also measured from above. That they're not getting in the classroom. I think it needs to be uh, on, in both directions. And learning is about people and not about technology. And we have mobile and ubiquitous learning everywhere. And we have also new actors who gives new influences. And that makes stronger quality and collaboration, but also competition. And if we, we make it in a good way, even competition is uh, uh, is good because it forces uh, better quality. So we'll be happy with some question and discussion. Uh, I haven't followed that the, the chat that very much myself, but maybe you have done that, Nellis. You can see if there are some special issues. Yeah, that's when we find out that they weren't able to do any of the uh, of the assignments and tasks in the flipped classroom. They're not able to do anything. For some reason, they just, you know, they're, they're just paralyzed. They don't know what to do. You give them assignments, you know, for the flipped classroom, mm -hmm. you ask them to view certain things, and they come back, and when you have the face-to-face, -face, you realize that they, they, they were not there. You know, not at home, not at school. So, you know, it seems like they're becoming more and more helpless mm -hmm. with technology, not just uh, in the classroom. Uh, I will see what I put here. You put a UNESCO link. Um, um, I think um, participants can go to the um, uh, OER University, for example. Uh, let me see if I can put some links myself. Uh, we'll try to, just a minute. I heard a very nice story also at this conference yesterday, uh, at this, uh, this Swedish conference on, um, uh, on distance education. Um, we had a session on, flip, on the flipped classroom. And um, the person who had that um, that session, he, he he was from Uppsala University, another university here in Sweden, and uh, they just employed a new teacher. And um, this teacher was quite young, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, the latter question, for example. Um, I think that is one reason why uh, I think uh, most universities have to focus more on how to be a self-organized learner, because it is not that easy. Uh, some universities have some kind of um, introduction course, how to study at universities, and where all those kind of things are discussed. Um, so that is, of course, one thing. Uh, I think there are uh, some um, some MOOCs on how to do it um, because it is not easy. Um, and uh, looking for MOOCs, you can just add a um, MOOC, for example, and you can add a topic you're interested in and uh, Google it. So that is one one thing. Um, if you're interested, what we are doing in um, in Europe, and this uh, you opening up education. I will put a link uh, as well. Um, I can start with the press release, and then you can find a information from that.
Someone was talking about uh, blended learning. But but this question about uh, again with uh, about self-organized learning, I think that is also one reason why so-called ordinary campus education need to change because we need to, as someone is saying here about the learning, we we need to more um, focus on those more soft soft skills, which is important, like uh, self-organized learning, like uh, problem-based learning, like. Um, being in active, active citizenship, um, uh, media training, uh, communication, um, all education much focus more, much more on those uh, those issues. Definitely, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. But I, I think that you know the universities need to have clear guidelines. You know, what do they expect from the students? Grades, uh, skills, a combination. You know, not. Yes, definitely. Definitely. That's what they want. You know, that's what they really want. They want to learn to... No, no, not at all. No. The content is all over. You can get it so easy. And the content is... Also get old very quick. Yeah. Uh, I think the work which is much um, what much popular nowadays is the flipped classroom, and I think if you work with that method, um, where students uh, do their homework at home, and uh, I mean they do the reading yeah. and uh, yeah, or the looking at um, MOOCs, for example, or looking at OERs. Uh, so uh, and then they come to the classroom and discuss with the with the academics and with the professors. That is one way to do it, because there you can follow up students' like, queries much better. Because you are really can take care of what they are, what kind of problems they have, what kind of uh, queries they have, what kind of uh, uh, how they they relate to their own thinking and to their own goal setting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I'd like to thank everyone, and I'd like to thank Dr. Ebba for joining us and for sharing. And I hope that this will leave you with a lot of ideas and thoughts about how we can move um, and become collaborative learners. I mm -hmm. think that would be great if we could all uh, share and learn from one another. So thank you. There are the claps. Thank you so much for sharing, and I'm looking forward to a lot more um, from everyone. So um, of course, there's not just way, one way to live, to do things, um, exactly. but I think... Um, <laughs> it's about this, doing this, taking time off from your... I think the motivation for the students is the most important to start with. I mean, we have so many students who are really not motivated for the classes at all. They just have to do it because they need to have some kind of degree, for example. Thank you so much. I heard a very nice uh, story also at this conference yesterday, uh, at this uh, the Swedish conference on uh, uh, on this education. Um, we had a session on, flip the, on the flipped classroom. And um, the person who had that um, uh, that session, he he, is, he was from Uppsala University, another university here in Sweden, and uh, they just employed a new teacher. And um, this teacher was rather young, and uh, you know, when they interviewed him, uh, starting to, to have this uh, teacher teach, teacher post, uh, they said, "Oh, how would you like to?" How do we, would you like to, to do the class and the course and now have what kind of um, how have you thinking about it? And um, he said, um, "Well, um, I think to start with, I have to interview the students why they are in my class." Thank you, thank you. And the professors, you know, they said, "Ah, 
it, it doesn't sound what we used to do, <laughs> but um, they let him go. So um, uh, he had his first um, meeting with the, with the students, and um, yes, he actually 